Hello, and welcome to the Reach or Miss Show, the podcast for the customer focused entrepreneur, where Hayuk Yogev speaks with entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs about reaching or missing the critical point of approaching the right customer with the right message at the right time and place. The point where business success starts. And here is your host, Hayut Yogev. Rich or Miss, episode 45. Madeleine Sklar is a serial entrepreneur, community builder, and leading Twitter marketing expert. With 22 years digital marketing experience and 13 years social media marketing under her belt, it's no surprise She's ranked the number one social media power influencer in Houston. Madeline interviews leading social media and marketing experts for her Twitter Smarter podcast, the weekly Communities That Convert podcast with Kami Hayas. Huffington Post has named Madeline one of the 50 women entrepreneurs to follow. Madeline's Clara. Hi, it's so great to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, it's wonderful. And I just shared with our audience what you've done until now. And I would like to ask you to share with us what are you doing and most passionate about today? And where are you heading? I am doing a lot. It's probably easier to talk about what I'm not doing because <laughs> I'm doing so many different things. But I have been doing digital marketing for the last 22 years, which I cannot believe it's been that many years. And I've been doing social media marketing as a business for the last 13 years. Um, I'm ranked number one for social media in the Houston area where I live, which is actually the fourth largest city in the U.S. So that's kind of a big deal. It is. I it is host, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really honored by that. I speak at the large social media conferences like Social Media Marketing World. I have two podcasts that I host and I have two Twitter chats that I host. So I keep really busy. I like to do a lot of things but it's all in the world of social media marketing because that is where my passion, and then especially with Twitter. I love helping people understand how to best use Twitter. So that's the thing I'm most passionate about today. That's great. And where are you heading? What do you see in front of you? Well, I enjoy podcasting so much that I really would like that to be a bigger priority in my business world. Uh, I also like teaching online courses. So I'm working up a whole library of courses all surrounding with Twitter marketing. And right now I'm developing a mastermind group for female entrepreneurs that want to learn how to live stream. I have found that so many women have not ventured into live stream video yet. And, you know, whether, whether because they're shy, they're introverted, or they don't understand the technology. So I want to be that person that fills in those gaps for them so that they can be excited about live streaming. So that's, that's where I'm headed. That's great. And can you tell me a bit about who you consider as your customers? These days, my customers are typically social media marketers. Uh, many of them are learning the business. They're, they're, you know, maybe working for a company, helping with social media, and they just want to learn how to do it really well. And so they look up to me as more like their online mentor, teaching them how to best use social media, how to especially use Twitter. So that's where I, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. I've done a lot of different things over the years in digital mar in the digital marketing world, but um, what I've noticed in the last two to three years, my it's changed a bit because I used to be in the music business doing the same type of work, but in the music business. So uh, the customers have really changed and is really evolved. So today in 2018, it is primarily social media marketers. What was the trigger for the change for this switch? Well, that's a great story. So I had been in the music business for close to 20 years and I loved it, but I wanted to do something different. I was, I was tired of just doing the same thing 
um, you know, being very limited with who my audience, what my audience reach was. I was watching for years, seeing the Mari Smiths and the Kim Garth and all those big name social media marketers who had a very wide audience. And I knew what they were teaching. I already had the knowledge. So I decided in 2015, I was going to make a pivot in my career and, and not stop music business completely, but I, and I was already known as being one of the top social media marketers, but I wanted to get known more widely as someone who could help people with social media and especially with Twitter uh, for their business. And I really decided to niche down on Twitter because it's really helpful to have a niche. You know, when we try to serve everyone, we end up serving no one because it's, it's too difficult. So I decided to really just niche down on Twitter. And I have to say, that was like the smartest decision I made. So with this pivot, going from primarily working with musicians, now the shift was over to primarily working with other social media marketers. Because you are focusing on Twitter, where do you see it going? What do you think about Twitter today? I think Twitter is really going through a renaissance right now. A lot of people started with Twitter many years ago, and then they moved over to Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and spent a lot of time on these other platforms and leaving Twitter behind. And then, of course, in the last few years, we've heard rumors about Twitter, you know, not surviving. that their stocks were going down, that they were going to get bought by a big company. So many different rumors were going around. So people were you know, scared of spending time on Twitter because they thought it was going to go away. I, on the other hand, did not believe any of it. I knew that, first of all, Twitter is a great marketing platform. It's a great place to connect with people. So I stayed in it 100% because I just knew that It would get to a place where we're at today where it's really having a revival. It's really going through a renaissance. People are coming back to it and seeing the power. And especially with all the changes going on in Facebook right now where Facebook has adjusted the algorithm to the point that if you're using it for your business with a Facebook page, you're going to have to spend money on advertising. So people are starting to look at other things. social networks to focus their attention on. And there are, a lot of them are looking at Twitter. So I feel like Twitter is doing well. I think it's going to continue to do well. They've got great features. I think they're going to probably come out with more. I hope they do. And just keep it on the cutting edge so that people will want to be on the platform using it. I must say that the last change, which I thought won't make any difference, really changed it for me. And I'm talking about the 280 characters. For me, it changes everything because suddenly I can, you know, express myself. I really enjoy it. It's a great feature. You know, there were rumors for quite a while and a lot of people said, no, don't do it. it you know, Twitter is Twitter because of the 140 characters. And I will admit, I was one of those. I, at first, I was like, oh, I hope they don't do this because 140 characters is what makes Twitter so special. But then once they changed it to 280, it was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool that we could have a whole thought. And, and there's nothing worse than typing a tweet and it cuts you off when you just need a few more characters, right? We've all been there where you have to go back and adjust it and maybe... change the word and and put an ampersand instead or abbreviate and then it doesn't make sense and yeah so you know there was a lot of frustration with that I'll admit that too you know that it, that was a little crazy at times so the 280 has been nice my biggest concern though was that people were gonna go crazy and start posting long tweets all the time day in and day out and that did not happen and it was interesting because Twitter was experimenting with this with a small group of users. And they said that the newness wears off really quickly, that people are going to use the 280 characters for a while. And then within a week, it goes back to normal. And they were so right. When it came out for everybody, sure enough, after, really just after a few days, people went back to using it the way they were. So if you could go on to Twitter at any time, 
And the majority of the tweets you see are going to be in the 140 range, maybe 200. You don't really see lots of, I mean, how many times do you, do you do a tweet that you actually use all 280? Probably not that much, right? Okay, you are asking me, and if I do, especially when I retweet, I do say what I think. Mm-hmm. So I usually use um, like almost the 280, but there are a lot of other times that I'm staying in the limit of 140 and even less. I think I'm of this group that's using it a bit more, the longest opportunity for tweets, but most people doesn't. Right. Absolutely. You know, this podcast is uh, mainly about customer focused because this is what marketing is all about, isn't it? And a lot of startup founders and entrepreneurs still have to study that and to learn how to focus on customers. And you did say that I think Twitter is a lovely tool just to be really focused on customers and to gain relationships. I would like to ask you to tell us, first of all, about your concept or beliefs on the way a startup or entrepreneurial business should approach its customers, and then give our listeners your best advice for their customers' approach and focus. Well, to answer your first question, I think what's really important is to listen. You know, you got to listen to your customers and your prospects to know what exactly they want. And a great example of this is this new mastermind group I'm starting for female entrepreneurs. For the past year, I've been hearing so many women telling me about their fear of using live stream video. And I've just been taking it all in. I've been asking lots of questions, but they're telling me their pain points. And, you know, in business, they always say, you know, go after those pain points and and they'll tell you what they want. And that's how a business can start. So I've been doing this for quite some time, just, you know, talking to female entrepreneurs, finding out this, I mean, it just kind of happened. I wasn't out specifically looking for the pain point, but this is a great way to start a business is, you know, through networking, through conversations, you're finding a a consistent pain point, which is what's, what's been happening in the past year for me. And so I've gotten to a point now where it's like, okay, I think this could be a new part of my business where I offer the solution. So I want it to be part mastermind so that way they can get lots of one-on-one help and accountability. And then part of it's going to be the training. So there'll be a lot of how to do this. And the response I'm getting right now from people is amazing. I'm having so many women telling me that they want this and they want it now. And they're just so happy that I'm providing the solution for this. So I'm really excited to pursue it. I might join you as well. That would be awesome. I would be honored. <laughs> I'd be honored. Well, so your advice is actually to listen and to yes, learn the listening. pain point? Yeah, listening is the most important thing you can do no matter what industry you're in, no matter what it is you do is to listen, to get that information, and then be that person that can provide the solution to what they need. Definitely. And now I would like to ask you, I know you've got a lot of successes and we'll come to it in a minute, but I would like to ask you to share with us your biggest, most critical failure with customers, the one that affected your entrepreneurial journey the most. Sure. This would be very early on in my entrepreneurial career. I'm an idea person. So I come up with ideas and some work and some don't. I had an idea, you know, the best ideas always come from your own needs, right? I mean, those are always the best, something that you want for yourself and you want that to, you know, turn into a business. So back when my son was very, very young, he was in a daycare center during the day. I wanted the ability to be able to see what he was doing through web cameras. The problem was the technology wasn't really there yet. This was before web cameras were what they were, are today. Like they, the most you could do back then was have a camera take a picture about what, first it was like once a minute, then it was like once every 30 seconds, but it was not pure video. But regardless, I wanted to have something we could put into the daycare center so you could see, you know, how your child's doing throughout the day. So I came up with a business plan. I had it all thought out. 
went and got a loan, a business loan. I did everything and it failed. And the reason why it failed is because and I was very young and I did not know anything about business. I was learning as I went along, but I failed a critical failure because I did not research enough. I did not research enough. And, and it turned out that the owners of the daycare centers weren't really ready for this yet. And it was expensive. Te the technology wasn't really that great, but it was also expensive technology at the time. And number two, the workers at the daycare center did not like the idea of a camera watching over them all day. So the lesson was, well, first of all, it was ahead of its time. But the lesson was that I should have spent much more time researching and learning what people wanted because this was my want. And I think that's a powerful want. And other parents, I talked to other parents and they wanted this as well. But at the end of the day, it's about being able to get customers. And the customers are the owners of the daycare center. And they just weren't interested. I could not get one of them to sign up. But this was after I already started the business. I took my business plan to the bank to get a loan back in the day when you got, you know, we're talking, this was back in the 90s, back when, you, you know, you got a bank loan. This was before Kickstarter. You know, today in 2018, you know, this would be something that could happen and it could be done cheaply because, you know, fa let's face it, you know, webcams are an easy thing to do. They're inexpensive. The technology's there. But at the time, it, it, it just wasn't there. And I wish, looking back, I wish I'd spent more time researching. But I also have to say, I'm glad that I failed early on in business because it taught me that, you know, it's okay to fail. Like during it, during it, it felt like the end of the world, no doubt. Like, I'm not going to lie. It felt like the end of the world. But very quickly, I got over it. Very quickly, I went on to something else that was successful. And, you know, you just have to try things. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. Because I always say that you should say to yourself, what is the worst thing that would happen? And when you think about the worst thing, it's probably not that bad. <laughs> right. That's right. And also, I think, um, you know, people weren't so used to uh, so many cameras all over to be exposed all the time. But today we are exposed all the time. So Absolutely. I think it was a bit ahead of its time. And now I would like you to share with us the story of your greatest, most significant success as a result of the right customer's focus or something you did right about approaching your customers. Well, one of the things I did, again, I've, as an entrepreneur, I've done a lot of different things. And, and one of the things that I'm most proud of is a, an online community I started back in 1996. And this was back when the internet was new. But I started an online community that brought together female musicians. And I called it Go Girls Music. I grew up playing guitar, I grew, but, but I was never a serious guitar player. I knew I would never be you know, playing in a band, you know, trying to make a living uh, doing that. But I always had a feeling growing up that I would somehow be connected to the music business. And so as the internet evolved, I thought, why don't I start a community that brings musicians together, primarily fem female musicians together, and that could be a cool thing and it'd be different and it'd be fun. And instead of back then, you know, prior to the internet, meeting people you did in person, but now we could do it through our computer. So it was really fascinating. So I grew this community and I even started a membership where people paid to be members. And it was a really cool thing. I mean, uh, what I'm really proud of is the fact that I started as a digital marketer 23 years ago, or 20, I mean, I'm sorry, 22 years ago, Everything I did, everything <laughs> is almost, almost the same. Different. Everything I've done is just from an idea. I, you know, sparked from an idea in my mind and brought it to fruition, which I think is pretty darn cool. So here I started this music community with a mission to promote, support, and empower women in music. And I was about six years into doing it. And it first started as a hobby. It was just a little side project hobby. And then it turned into a business because I started the membership. And I'll never forget, I was in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest, which is the big, big music conference that happens in, in the United States. 
And we were putting on a music show and I had lots of different musicians playing one evening and I was the host. So I would get up on stage and introduce each act. And there were so many people there and they were loving the music and they, they, it was an experience and it was not like anything I'd ever experienced before. And I will never forget. I was up on stage looking out at everybody. Mm -hmm. And I said out loud, I said, running this community for the past six years has brought me to this moment right now. And this is the most amazing moment, you know, sharing this stage, being here with all of you and all of these great musicians. So it was just a, a really cool thing that just like, it just like hit me. Like I created something out of nothing. I turned it into a business and I'm having this wonderful evening sharing it with all of these music fans and all of these musicians. And it, it just, it was just a wow moment for me. And it's just something I'll never forget. And I still carry that thought with me because it's just a reminder to follow your passions, follow the things you want to do in life. You know, maybe you'll make money, maybe you don't, but, but yeah, but you should follow. I mean, you know, had it just been a passion project and I never made any money from it, that would have been okay. You know, just something to do on the side for fun as a hobby. But the fact that I was able to turn it into a real business and have fun with it, I think is such a testament to the entrepreneur. And I'll, I'll tell you, I was not one of those kids growing up with the lemonade stand and selling baseball cards. You know, you hear these stories of Gary Vaynerchuk and all these guys that, you know, had all this in them as kids. I had no idea that I would become an entrepreneur. When I started all of this, I was not 20 years old. I was not just out of college. I was a little bit older and I was still trying to figure out like, you know, what are the things that excite me that I want to do with my life? And then the internet came about and it was like this light bulb of like, wow, there's so many things I could do with this. So it was, it was really cool. It is. And it seems like you really uh, got it very early. You really understood the power of it and the opportunities of what the internet is uh, opening for us much earlier than most of us. So it sounds great. I've always been an early adopter to technological things. I don't know why. It just kind of happens. I'm not trying to. But I got on Twitter before most people had even heard of it. I was blogging before people even knew what the word blog was. I, I started blogging in 2000. And that was very, wow. very early in blogging. But I was live tweeting at a music conference in 2008. So it was 10 years ago. And people really didn't understand what Twitter was yet. But I was already live tweeting at an event. So I just seem to have this knack for doing things very early on and being that early adopter. And I think it's cool. I mean, there are times where it serves me well and people look at me, at, you know, they, they can look to me and know that I'll be the first one sharing, you know, some new social media platform that just that's about to come out or, or something that's new and exciting. But then on the flip side, like with my failure with the webcams and the daycare center, Sometimes when you're too early, people are not ready for it, but somebody comes in a few years later and they go and capitalize it and make all the money. Hmm. Yeah, but I think um, you really took the lesson from uh, the early daycare story yes. and uh, yes. it seems like you're doing things right the way it looks today. And I would like to ask you, can you recommend the best, most effective technological or digital tool that's related to customer focus, marketing or sales. And, you know, there are so many tools today. And I'm not asking to add another one to the list, but to look for those that the successful entrepreneurs are really using and have this opportunity to adapt what works for them. Well, there are so many tools out there. It is definitely hard to pick one. There's so many that have helped me in, in all areas of business. If I had to pick one that's, that's really helped the most and the longest, it would probably be Evernote. Evernote, I've always referred to that as a filing cabinet for my brain. You know, that's, that is, is some place where I can just take information and store it in there. 
And then I, I'm really big with post-it notes. I have post-it notes everywhere. I have you know thoughts and ideas. I, I have to write it down. But what I found with Evernote is that same thing. It's just like my post-its. I can put it in there and then not have to worry about forgetting about it. And it's really helped me in my business as an entrepreneur, um, whether it's, you know, like right now, my, my idea for this new mastermind for women that I'm building, you know, I can go into Evernote and, and put all of my thoughts in there, all of my information. I can look at it on my phone. I can look at it on my desktop computer. It goes wherever I go. And I think it's just been one of the best tools of, of everything out there. That's great. And is there any service provider or person like a mentor, consultant, advertiser, or it can also be a book that really had a major impact of your customer success and can help other entrepreneurs as well? Um, that is such a good question. Um, if I had to pick like a mentor, you know, you know, what's great about the internet today is that we can have virtual mentors. And I love that. And I get people tweeting me all the time telling me that they look up to me as their virtual mentor, which I'm always honored. It's just so amazing to hear that. But, you know, I would have to say Gary Vaynerchuk, who's very well known social media expert and, and author, he just put out his fifth book, but his very first book came out back in the 90s. He was pretty much an unknown. And he had a book that came out called Crush It. And it was all about using online marketing, like you know, social media marketing for your business. And I was already doing social media marketing. So there wasn't a lot of the social media part that I didn't know. That part I already knew and was already teaching it. But it was the way he wrote the book and the way he, you know, the attitude like mine of just going for it, just doing it. And I just loved his energy. It really came through in the book. So I started following him online and following him on Twitter. And I even got the chance to meet him in person at Social Media Marketing World a few years ago. He was a keynote speaker. Yeah, Do you remember? he was with Marcus Sheridan, yes, isn't he? Yes, that, right. And I got the... Right after he spoke, he went out front and was doing book signing. And I didn't have his book with me, but I went in line anyway, thinking, well, certainly I can still meet him. And I got the chance to meet him. And here's what's so amazing. I introduced myself. I said, hey, I'm Madeline Sklar. I'm also a speaker here as well. And he goes, I know who you are. And I, my jaw probably dropped. I mean, I was, in, I was shocked, like, like, he really pays attention to his audience. He really pays attention to people, even though he's a big deal. You probably was someone to pay attention to. I, well, I, it's I, not well, by mistake I, that he knew who you are. I probably because I had niched down on Twitter and I was making a, a lot of waves on Twitter is the only thing I can think of because I had been hosting Twitter chats for many, many years. I was doing one in the music business as well that was highly successful. I uh, very active on Twitter. So that's the only thing I could think of is maybe he just pays close attention to, um, you know, people that are, are standing out on Twitter. So uh, that was just to me, like, so big, because he's been this virtual mentor to me for so many years that first started with his book, but moved on to just following him. Even today, he shares videos all the time. And they're geared towards entrepreneurship and he, his message is so good. And his attitude is just do it. He'll even say, stop watching my videos. Just get out there and do it. Just go out and do something. <laughs> and I love that. I love yeah. the message, especially the message he's sending out to young people, you know, reminding them like, you know, the young, young 20 somethings or they want success now. And he's like, look, you, you got so many years ahead of you. And since, you know, I'm, older now, I look back and I say the same thing. When, when somebody comes to me and they're young and they're like, how did you become so successful so fast? I want to get there too. I'm like, you've got so much time. Don't worry about, it. you've got many, many years. Just focus on learning as much as you can and you'll do just fine. I really like your recommendation of uh, Gary V because what I like about him so much is that he came from the actually traditional world. So he really learned how to, you know, make business in the 
traditional world in stores, in uh, retail. And then he made the switch or came to this new world. So I think it's beautiful. Do you remember where was the point that you actually stopped chasing after your customers and started to attract them? You know, what's interesting is that really early on in my career as an entrepreneur in the digital marketing world, Um, was I chasing after? So, but, but not even really chasing after. So let me kind of explain. When I first started in 1996 for digital marketing, I started my music community that I mentioned, and I also started a web design business. And this was when it was brand new. I was one of the very first web designers. There were like three of us in, in this huge city, fourth largest city in the U.S. There were three of us that were the very first web designers, and, you know, that, doing it as a business in the city. And I didn't really have to chase after customers because it was so new that when people found out about me, they were just throwing business at me. And this went on for years where I didn't have to do any selling. Like once they found out this was what I was doing, they wanted to hire me to do this, you know, dot com thing. You know, so many times they say, I don't know what this dot com thing is. I just know I need one. Um, and so I was I was. <laughs> yeah. I was the one developing that very first web presence for people, that very first website back in the old days. Um, so I wasn't really chasing after. Now, my music organization first started as a hobby, as I mentioned before. And so initially, I was trying to discover and find musicians on the internet. And back then, there were not, you know, not that many people were on the internet back then in 1990s. This was like January 1996. So... I was actively seeking people just to talk to and connect with, not sure if this was going to become a business, but when I really think back to my start, I really wasn't quote chasing after now when, as things evolved and when I uh, went into social media as a business, I was already well established in the music business at that point. So I was able to easily get business. It's like I would just, kind of, you know, change my focus. So it was started the web design business and then the web design eventually evolved to me doing social media. And so because I was already well established, you know, in the music business, established as a web designer. Yeah. So it really helped tremendously. And then when I did the pivot in 2015, again, I was already, people knew my name. They already knew who I was. But they didn't really know me so much in the social media marketing world. So it really helped to speak at social media marketing world and other social media conferences because that got my name out there to a wider audience. So I didn't really feel like I was chasing after, but I was always, I will say this, I am always working hard day and night on my brand. And, and you know, Gary Vaynerchuk's a great example of this. If you want to get known and you want to get business, work on your brand, work on your personal brand. And if, it, and if it's a company, work on the brand for your company, but make it your mission. So many people make their work life their nine to five. Well, you know what? The internet is 24-7. So 24/7. Work, <laughs> work it all hours. Work it whenever you have free time, but spend time on this and you'll get the rewards. I, I love what I do. I will be on my computer early in the morning. I'll be on it late at night. I'm just on here talking to people, connecting with people, using these social networks to my advantage to connect with people. And in doing that, I'm getting more widely known every single day. And it really works. It works. You know, there are many things that contribute to our success, and I'm sure there are many things that contributed to your success, but usually there is one main thing that really makes it. And I want to ask you, what is the most important factor that affected your success? What is your key success factor? Um, gosh, you know, I... It's not something I've really given a lot of thought to. I, I just, I've always stayed on this trajectory of just moving upward. And that makes me happy. Just keep doing what I'm doing, meeting great people along the way, 
and not that there's this big end goal. Um, I don't know if there's ever going to be one. I, I just, I like the journey. And I know a lot of people do, you know, Gary Vee mm-hmm. talks about this a lot. It really is about the journey. You know, like Gary Vee, Gary Vee's big thing is to, you know, one day buy the New York Jets. And then, and then he's, mm-hmm. he, you know, that's his biggest goal in life. And, but then he'll say, but it's the journey. It's not really so much that it's really the journey. And so that's how it's always, I don't really have this big thing that I aspire to. I just love the work I do. I love that I keep moving forward. Um, my attitude is just do it. Um, ready, fire, aim. I'm really big with ready, fire, aim, not ready, aim, fire, ready, fire, aim, because you come up with an idea and just get it out there because it's never going to be perfect. So just get it out there and then perfect it as you go. And if you do things like this, you'll keep moving forward, up and forward. You know, you'll keep, you know, reaching up to the stars. And uh, that's what's always worked for me. Sounds great. My final question before I ask you what is the best way to connect with you is the mountain question. And I want to ask you, since we talked about it a little and we both look at this journey that you talked about, or I look at this journey in the mind of customers, which is most of what marketing is all about. And exactly like you said, it's always looking from the point of view of your customers or potential customers. But I always look at it as a journey and as climbing a mountain. I wanted to ask you, is there any mountain, physical mountain or If not, it can be a, any other mountain as well. Did you ever climbed or wished to climb or you are dreaming to climb some mountain? Because you just told us that you don't have this, you know, jet goal or something like that. But do you have any story with mountains? Well, first of all, I love this question. I have to tell you, I think it's really cool. Uh, I've done a lot of interviews and I have to say, this is like one of the coolest questions anyone's ever asked me. Thank you. Um, I don't, I don't have a, yeah, I don't have a physical mountain, but like I was saying before, I always feel like I'm going, you know, moving up and moving forward. And it feels like going up the steps of a mountain. It really, when, when, when I'm doing my work and I think about the work I'm doing, the journey I'm on, I visualize that I am moving up a mountain. And interesting, you know, the more I thought about it, I, I have this ring uh, that I wear and it's a spinner ring. So the middle part can spin, which is kind of cool. It's kind of unique. And it's lines that are like up and down, almost like ongoing rectangles that are connected together. But it, it looks like mountaintops, basically. It looks like, it's, it looks like it's up and down a mountain. I'll have to take a picture and send it to you. You sure? You yeah. sure you put it in the show yeah. notes? It sounds great. Nobody climbed a ring mountain yet. There you go. Well, here's what, so I've had this ring for probably 10 years at least. And what I will do from time to time is I'll look at it and I'll, I'll be inspired because it does look like mountaintops. And I'll be like, you know, I'm, I'm climbing my mountain. I'm moving forward. I'm moving up. And it's just a little me thing that I do uh, off and on. But, it, you know, it. It really works. It's a mindset thing. You know, it's, it's all about the mindset. It's all about the mindset. And I'm sure you, you are there because when I asked you about your key success factor, you talked about moving upward. You didn't say moving forward, although you, you meant this as well. But you talked about the upward. You talked about the climbing. So it's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hmm. <laughs> And before we say bye-bye, I want to ask you, what is the best way to connect with you for any one of our listeners that probably would like to be in touch with you? The best way is definitely Twitter with my name, at Madeline Sklar. One of the best things of having an unusual name is that I'm very easy to find. So <laughs> Twitter, number one, always the best. And then number two would be my website, MadelineSklar.com. And I... Definitely recommend everybody reach out, send me a tweet. Let me know you heard me on this podcast. I would love to hear from you. And I reply to people. When they tweet me, I reply back. That's great. So we'll put every link that uh, connected to you and to things that we talked about today in the show notes page 
of your interview. Madeleine, I would like to thank you. I really enjoyed it thank so you. much. Thank you. And you are so thank unique. Thank you. You are special in this view, and it's so great to have you here. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you. I really enjoyed it, too. Really, really appreciate it. This was so much fun. <laughs> thank you, and take care. And we are going to meet at the social media marketing world, right? I'm going to yes. come and listen to you. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to meet you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Rich or Miss, episode 45. Madeleine Sklar is a serial entrepreneur, community builder, and leading Twitter marketing expert. With 22 years digital marketing experience and 13 years social media marketing under her belt, it's no surprise she's ranked the number one social media power influencer in Houston. Madeline interviews leading social media and marketing experts for her Twitter Smarter podcast, the weekly Communities That Convert podcast with Kami Hayas. Huffington Post has named Madeline one of the 50 women entrepreneurs to follow. And for you, our listeners, until the next time, it all goes down to this. You either reach or miss. Keep reaching your goals and vision. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Reach or Miss Show, the podcast for the customer-focused entrepreneur. You can find all the information, links, and resources that was mentioned at the show in our website, reachormiss.com. See you next week.